Drawing a koala is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello wonderful people, it's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools and let's get started. Great, so here we have our koala sketch that we did in the first part of the mini series. If you haven't watched that video yet, I will link it in the description below so that you can go and create your sketch and then come back here so that we can add the color. Now, once you have your sketch, the first thing we're going to do is lower the opacity of this layer so we can see the color that we're adding. Then you're going to create a new layer that you're going to put below the sketch layer and you're going to rename this new one to base. So here, what we're going to do is we're just going to create an outline of the koala first. So just one solid color. I'm going to go with this grayish blue. And in terms of brushes, in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different options. So one is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate and it's going to allow you to follow without any problem. The other brush though is going to be a brush from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle, which is going to allow you to save some time and get more professional results. So if you want to check those out, they will be linked in the description below and there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. But again, it is not essential. And for the sketch here, well for the sketch, for the base color, you're going to pick either from the airbrushing panel, the hard brush, and making sure that you lift up the opacity back to 100% if you follow my watercolor videos. Or if you have the illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the base round brush. And all we're doing here is we're just going to outline the base shape so that we can then fill it in and create a solid color silhouette. So although this step is not super complicated, it is really important that you take the time to do it right so that your outlines are as smooth as possible. And if you see that you're struggling drawing smooth outlines, it might be helpful for you to do a little warm up before doing this. So if you're interested, I made my own warm up routine available as a video. It's really short, it's nine minutes. Well, really short, I know nine minutes can be a lot for a lot of people, but it's going to help you save a lot of time because your lines here in the step are gonna be just much smoother in general if you do warm up beforehand. So if you wanna check it out, again, it will be linked in the description below. I'm gonna put it in the annotations as well. But honestly, there's no magic trick here. You just have to go over your lines and outline them so that we can then create a koala silhouette. So here, feel free to pause the video and take all the time you need until you have a really nice silhouette. And then we're gonna keep going with adding more colors, shading the koala and adding details. So once you have your full outline, there is no more hole in it. You can just drag your color to fill in the areas and then create your full on silhouette. So this is what it should look like. Now, once we have the koala silhouette, we're also going to be doing the same thing for the tree. So we're going to create a separate layer that we're going to put below the base layer. This one you can rename it to base as well. I'm just going to rename it to tree so that it is not, you know, confusing. And in terms of color, I'm going to go with brown, but you could honestly pick the background color, color pick that and make it just a little bit lighter. That way you kind of stay in the same color palette, but I like having this brown. It brings, it brings a bit more color to the whole piece, which otherwise is pretty much gray and blue. So here, same thing, you're just gonna draw the outline of the tree and then you're going to fill it in. So once we have our koala base like this, we're going to move on to adding some secondary colors like the belly and the cheeks. So for that, create a new layer above the base. You're going to rename it to secondary color, but before that, we're going to apply it as a clipping mask. So just tap on layer and then select clipping mask in the menu. And then you can rename it to extra color, secondary color, belly, whatever you want. And you're going to remember what it is basically. And for the color, we're also going to try avoiding going with a pure white, just like we tried avoiding going with a pure gray. We're going to use a white that has a little bit of blue. So you can go back to your basic gray and just make it lighter. Having colors, well, having grays and whites and black that have a little bit more color in it, it's just going to make your illustration look more alive. So that's always a good tip to keep in mind. In terms of brushes, you can go in the sketching panel and using the 6B pencil. If you have the illustration bundle though, I recommend you use the basic texture. Now the beauty of having a clipping mask is that whatever we draw on this new layer is going to stay within the base shape that we have, so the koala silhouette. That means we can go ahead, brush over the ears, add some more white on the top, and it's going to automatically stay within our koala shape. Super helpful, really saves a lot of time. So go ahead and do that. 
You can also draw some sort of a like chin area basically that is going to be kind of the extension of the belly, I guess. Here you can see I'm kind of coloring in manually the inside because I do want to have the texture of the brush. But if you don't really want to have texture, you can just use auto fill to fill in your shapes. So just drawing outlines and then filling it in by dragging your color like we did before. So essentially here you're drawing half a circle on the bottom part of the face and then an oval for the belly which is going to probably be hidden by the arm as well as the tree but it's just you know an oval shape overall if you want you can also draw some rosy cheeks on this layer so for that i'm going to use kind of a like a salmony pink i guess so a pink that has a little bit of gray in it and we're just going to be drawing the semicircle in the bottom corners of the face so something a little bit like this and as you can notice here these cheeks are pretty much the same size as the half circle that we've drawn for the belly part of the face i know that doesn't make a whole lot of sense but the white part of the belly that actually bleeds in into the head and with that we're going to be ready to start adding details so believe it or not, at this point, we're pretty much done with the hardest part of this tutorial. Everything else is just going to make the piece look so much better, but it's quite easy. So we're going to create a new layer above the base, above the extra color, and we're going to rename it to details. This one should not be a clipping mask. And here we are going to color pick our base gray and we're going to make it slightly darker so that we can go ahead and add some outlines. For now, don't worry too much about the color because we're going to change it later. We just want to be able to see it. And we're going to use either the 6B pencil from the sketching panel or if you have the illustration bundle, you can pick the outline brush, of course. And you want to have a brush that is, you know, not too big, not too small, something roughly like this. <laughs> but basically here, all we're doing is we're going to outline everything, especially when there's an overlap. We want to make sure that all our pieces are separate. And for that, we can go ahead and maybe lower the sketch a little bit to make sure that we see really where we're drawing. And there's really no secret here. You're just going to go around your koala to outline it. And also whenever there is an overlap, for example, the arm over the body, you're going to outline it as well so that we can see that there are two different parts. And it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this fun video, please go ahead and comment moonlight. It's all going to make sense later, I promise. But yeah, if you're, if you're new on the channel and you might be wondering what's the deal with the secret password, we've been doing this for a few months now and people seem to really, really like it. Basically, it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and paste my videos better, which helps me create better tutorials for you guys, but it's also a way for the community to see who's part of the community. <laughs> so whenever you leave a comment, we all get to see, you know, your name, sometimes even your face, and we get to see who's drawing. And especially for me, it's really great because you guys know me, you see my face, you hear my voice, but I have no idea who you guys are. So the secret password is kind of a, a little thing to fix that. So just go ahead and comment Moonlight and then we're going to keep going. I'm actually going to stop talking, let you focus on drawing your outlines and then we're going to meet up in the next step in which we're going to draw the facial feature. So don't forget to draw the eyes and the mouth, that's very important, but don't draw the nose just yet. We're going to draw it on a separate layer. And once you have your eyes and your mouth, you can also go ahead and draw some little hairs that are just kind of, you know, in groups of two or three. You're going to see how I do it in just a few seconds. I really like it because it makes the koala feel like it's actually like covered in fur as opposed to just being a soft plastic or something without actually having to draw all the texture for the fur. So that's how I usually show that there's fur on my character, just drawing little groups of one, two, three hair all over the place. So nothing crazy, it shouldn't take too long. And once you're happy, you know, you can draw maybe five, six of these groups. We're gonna go ahead and create a new layer for the nose. We're going to rename it to <laughs> nose. And the reason I like to draw it on the separate layer is because it's such an important feature in the sense that it's really, really big and it overlaps, for example, the mouth. And if I wanted to move it around, it's easier to do that if it is on a separate layer. So you don't have to draw it on a separate layer. You can draw it on the same layer as the other details, but might as well draw it separately. So just an outline going in with a darker version of your gray and just filling it in like this. 
And I know right now the outlines, especially the facial features, look a little bit crazy because it's all the same color, but for now this is what we want. We're going to go in later and tweak that. I'm going to show you how. But before that, we're also going to go ahead and add the details on the tree. And at this point, you can go ahead and hide your sketch layer. We don't need it anymore, at least not for now. And you're going to go ahead, create a new layer above the tree, rename it to details, and pretty much do the exact same thing as we did for the koala. So just picking the base color, or trying to, <laughs> making it darker, and then you're just going to go over and outline your tree. So there's really no magic trick here, it's pretty much the exact same thing we did before, but just on the tree. But you might notice, once you get around the belly, since the koala layer is above the detail layer, we don't see the detail. So what I do is I just bring the tree detail layer on top of everything, on top of the koala, and then just keep drawing my lines. So at this point, you might want to rename your detail layer, the tree one, to details tree or something like that so you don't confuse them, but I personally don't really mind. We don't have a whole lot of layer in this project. And you can also go in and kind of clean the little parts where the detail might be overlapping the koala, but don't worry too much about it because we're also going to be adding some more texture. And in terms of texture for the tree, I personally like to draw these kind of spirals and, and wavy lines. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I like it. I think it looks good, so <laughs> that's usually what I do. And I also like to kind of draw some little, you know, holes and dots. I don't know. That's kind of what I do. And you can see here, I'm just not really worrying about the fact I'm going over the koala because I want my lines to be really smooth. I prefer going over the koala and then erasing, then just drawing one little segment, then kind of stopping and starting over because that way sometimes it looks like the line are not super fluid. But that's just my way of doing it. You can do it your own way as long as it works for you. That's all good. Wonderful, so we're ready to start shading, which is really exciting. And for that, we're going to create a new layer below the details layer, but above the extra color layer. We're going to rename it to shadows, if I can do it. <laughs> there we go. And we're going to apply it as a clipping mask as well, so that it stays within the base layer. We're also going to change the blending mode of this layer by tapping on the little N right here, and we're going to set it to linear burn. We're going to lower the opacity for now around 50%, but we're going to go back and tweak it later. And in terms of color, I always like to draw shadows in a grayish purple color, other than just gray. Again, we want to avoid using pure grays, pure white, pure black. That's kind of the theme of this tutorial, I guess. So here we're going with a grayish purple, but we're going to tweak the color later as well. So don't, you know, don't agonize over it for now. In terms of brushes, you can pick the 6B pencil still in the sketching panel. So same brushes you've been using before, or if you have the illustration bundle, pick the basic texture brush. And here I'm pretending that my koala is in the forest at night, so there's only the moonlight, there we go, that is shining on him. Which means the shadows are going to be pretty soft and are going to be mostly located below different body parts. So for example here the head is casting a shadow on the arms as well as the body, then the arm is going to be casting a shadow on the lower part of the body and so forth. So here just go ahead and map out the shadows, don't worry about making them soft, we're going to blend everything in later. And then once more I'm going to stop talking to let you focus on your shadows, I'm going to speed up the video so you can use it as a reference to where to put on your shadows, and then we're going to meet in the next step which as you might guess is going to be blending everything in so that it looks a little bit less crazy than it does right now. And before blending, we might actually want to tweak the color of the shadow a little bit. And for that, you can use in the adjustment panel here at the top, the hue, saturation and brightness option, setting it for the entire layer. And then you're going to be able to play with three sliders here at the bottom, the hue, saturation and brightness. So you can just play with those and kind of see what you like here. I'm just going to zoom in so that we can have a better idea of the color I'm changing. So I'm going to go with a bit more of a purplish shadow, but Again, just experiment and see what you personally like. And then once you're done, we're going to blend these in. So for that, you can use the smudge tool here at the top. You can either set your brush to the soft brush from the airbrushing panel if you want really soft shadows. I like texture, as you can see, so I'm gonna use the stucco brush from the painting panel. And here again, nothing crazy complicated. You're just gonna go over the edges of your shadow and soften them. So here, especially if you're using a brush that has texture to it, you can really be loose and rough because you don't want to create a perfect gradient anyway, you just want to blend in the edges a little bit so that they're not quite as intense. And you're probably going to notice that your detail layer is going to blend in the shadows a little bit, you're not going to see the details really well, but don't worry about that in a few steps or maybe the next step, I don't quite remember, I'm going to show you how to fix that. 
So once more, feel free to take all the time you need here to blend the shadows, but I have a little tip for you. Try not to over blend the shadow edge for the nose shadow, because whenever you're drawing shadows, if the object that is casting a shadow is really close to the shadow itself, the edge is going to be fairly sharp, so that's the case of the nose. Now if the object that is casting a shadow is really far away, then the edge is going to be smoother. So that's just a little trick to remember whenever you're drawing shadows. You might also want to go back and play with the opacity until you get something that you like, but don't worry, like I was telling you, your details is probably going to be blending a little bit weird here, so don't worry about that, we're going to fix it later. For now, we're just going to go ahead and add a new layer for the lights, so creating a new layer, renaming it Light or Lights, and applying it as a clipping mask again, so just like this. And for this one, we're going to use the Blending Mode Add, which is really intense, so we're just going to lower the opacity around, you know, 20% for now. So for the light, you can use any kind of bright color you want. You could go with, you know, a bright blue to kind of stay in the night feel. I'm going to go with more of a bright yellowish green. I don't know. I just, I'm feeling it. <laughs> and here, you're just going to basically kind of double the outline for every area of the koala that is facing upwards. So I'm kind of pretending here that the moon is coming, well, obviously from the top, but also from slightly behind the koala. And if you've watched more of my tutorials in the past, you probably noticed that's usually how I do highlights. It's not necessarily the most realistic way of drawing lights, but I really like the cartoonish feel that it gives to the piece. And also it really helps the character pop and detach from the background, which is super, super important. And also it's just a really easy way to draw lights. So. I'm all for that. <laughs> I also really like adding little highlights on the cheeks, so nothing really crazy complicated, just little ovals like this that I tend to align with the corners of the mouth. I think it just makes the character look even more cute and it's just so simple, why not do it? And just like for the shadows, you can go back and play with the opacity of your light layer until you get something that you like. It is always a personal preference, so don't necessarily need to do the exact same as I am doing. And we're also going to add some lights on the tree. We didn't add shadows, we're just going to add lights here. So creating a new layer, applying it as a clipping mask, renaming it to lights. You can rename it to lights tree if you want. That's again, personal preference. You're going to also set the blending mode to add and set the opacity to something similar to what you did for the lights on the koala. And the same thing here, you're just going to outline some parts of the tree here. I mean, I'm just kind of going it randomly, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But, you know, we're drawing cartoon cute animals, it doesn't need to make perfect sense. <laughs> And with that, we're ready to start fixing our details layer so that they don't look as crazy as they look right now. And for that, we're going to activate alpha lock on the details layer. Now for that, you have two ways. You can just either swipe it with two fingers towards the right, like this, or you can manually activate it by just opening the menu and then selecting alpha lock right here. Now what alpha lock does is everything we draw on this details layer now is going to stay within the outlines that we already drawn. So super helpful. So you're going to go ahead and color pick the shadow color, so the darkest part of your gray. Make it even darker and then you can just go over the outline areas that are blending in the shadows to make them even darker. So you just brush over like this. We're also going to use this technique to change the color of the eyes and the mouth. So for that, you can just go ahead and color pick the color of the nose and then brush over the eyes and the mouth, which is going to make your koala pop so much more. It finally looks a little bit more alive than it did before. And we're also going to add more details on the nose, so also activating alpha lock on that layer. <laughs> I can do it. There we go. And then we're going to make our color even darker and we're going to draw some nostrils. We can barely see it in the video. I'm going to add an image just here so you can see what I'm doing, but nothing complicated. And we're also going to add a highlight on the top of the nose. And for that, you can just go ahead and color pick the color you used for the belly. Then with the same brush, just drawing a little line for a highlight, just like this, maybe also adding a little dot. And we're almost ready to move on to the background, but we're missing a really important element, the little green leaves. So for that, you can create a new layer above the koala lights below the details, renaming it to leaves. 
And here, I mean, there are so many ways you can draw the leaves. I'm just gonna quickly draw some super simple green eucalyptus leaves. So picking a bright, vibrant green, I want it to pop and add a touch of color to our piece. And going back to the outline brush or sticking with the 6B pencil, if you're using the free Procreate brushes, you can draw the leaves on this kind of little pokey branch <laughs> situation, something like this. I like to draw three there and then one in the corner of the mouth and the nose, maybe two. But honestly here, it's not really about the shape. It's much more about just adding more color to the piece. And you can go in with a darker version of your green and also adding an outline and maybe a middle line to your leaf like this. Awesome! And with that, we're ready for the background. But just before, I personally really like to group my layers. You could also merge them. So if you want to merge them, you can just use fingers and just kind of squish them together. So kind of like this. That's really a personal preference though. I know some people like to have a fewer layer possible. I like to keep mine separate because I'm used to clients wanting changes <laughs> and when the layers are separate, it's just easier. So I just swipe my layers toward the right and then create a group with the entire koala and tree. It just makes the file so much more organized and then you can rename your group to koala or character or whatever you want. And once that is done, we're going to create a new layer below this group. So just like this and we're going to rename it to background, forest, tree, whatever you want. And we're just going to color pick our background color and making it even darker than it is. We're going to stick with the same brush we used last, so the 6B pencil or the outline brush. And we're just going to roughly map out where the trees are going to be. So for that, again, totally up to you. We just want to basically frame the koala. So I'm kind of drawing random blobs like this and then simply filling them in. And once you have some nice, simple framing like this, you can honestly keep it that way or you can zoom in and add some more detail leaf shape here and there. And just to kind of make it seem less like a random blob and more like, I guess, a forest or a tree silhouette shadow kind of situation. And here, there's really no rule. I'm drawing leaves, but you could be drawing just branches or like tree trunks, whatever you want. You could also be drawing other koala silhouettes. Seriously, you can make it as intensely detailed as you want. I like to keep it fairly simple. And for now, all you're going to do is draw these outlines, then fill in the leaves. And in a few steps, well, not in a few steps, but after we're done with this, I'm going to show you a way to kind of check if your background is overwhelming your characters, if your background is too intense. Because that's really important. When you're drawing a character, usually, you know, that's the rule of thumb, you want it to separate really well from the background. You don't want the background to be the one thing that people see first. So I'm going to show you a tip to check that out, but for now, just go ahead, focus on your leaves. I'm going to do the other side of camera and then we're going to meet back and I'm going to show you the trick that I was telling you about. So usually to see if I have enough contrast between my character and my background, I create a new layer above everything I've drawn and I just filling in with white. I then set the blending mode of this layer to either color or saturation. It's the exact same since we're using white. And that's going to allow you to see the contrast in your piece much better. So in this case, we noticed that the leaves in the back, there are there. But the main thing is for sure the koala. It really pops from the rest of the background. So we're good to go with that. For example, though, if I went ahead and draw these kind of leaves and trees in the background in a much lighter color like this, if we go ahead and activate the white layer again, we can see that the background now competes with the koala. So that's not what we want. So again, that's just a really quick way of checking the contrast in your piece. It is not the only way and it's not the only kind of contrast. You don't just have light contrast, which is what we're checking here. But in general, again, that's a quick way and that's just really useful. And the last thing we might want to do is add some little fireflies. So just creating a new layer above this kind of foresty layer that we did behind the koala. We can put it in the front as well. Honestly, it doesn't really matter. And you can set the blending mode of this layer to either color dodge or add. Again, both of those are going to work, they're just going to be different. And for that, you're going to pick a super light version of your background color and you're just going to draw some little fireflies, so just little circles sprinkled around your piece. 
It makes everything look kind of magical, honestly. It brings so much more life and makes the piece feel a bit more coherent and full. The background doesn't look quite as empty anymore, but it's still not competing with the koala. And if you want to have a firefly that is in front of either the tree or the koala, make sure that you bring the firefly layer above it in the layer panel. And just like for everything else, you can always go back in the layer panel and just tweak the opacity as well so you can get a blending that you like. And you can also experiment like I was telling you with different blending modes and finding the one that you like the most. And if you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to draw more cute animals, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that, how to draw even more cute animals. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of the weekly videos, then just click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.